Whether you loved it or hated it, Atypical's final season came out, and I'm here to talk all about it. Hi, my name is Imani Van Buren, and welcome to my channel, IVB Watch With Me, where I debunk all of my, and hopefully your, favorite TV shows. I wanted this to be a Medium article that I had saved on their little uh, drafts thing, and I'm just going to read what I had to say. When this show premiered and I saw the first season, it inspired me to write about it so that maybe I could be published on the AV Club or something. This was just a passing thought. That was four years ago. I was in community college with dreams of becoming a teacher, and like Sam, I was romantically inexperienced, socially awkward, and I had a major crush on the wrong person. At the moment, I'm still in community college, only pursuing something that is extremely hard to get into, but that I'm extremely passionate about, the entertainment industry. Specifically, I want to write and produce my own show. I ha I ha I've had exactly one relationship under my belt, but I've come out as bisexual to myself and others, so that's a plus. Still socially awkward, and I haven't talked to that aforementioned wrong person face to face in well over three years. But why did you click on this very article? For the last shot of the show, we finally get to see Sam taking his first steps in Antarctica. Antarctica. Antarctica! Ah, the maybe atypical part, right? Something I've grappled with my entire life is the fact that I, like Sam, have a learning disability. Myself, my parents, and my doctors never threw the term autism around, but tons of folks get diagnosed with it later in life, so you never know. I've always been great in English and English-like subjects, but math, science, social studies, really anything besides English is really hard for me. It always has been. I have help and lots of it from parents and relatives, but I struggle with day-to-day -day things. For example, I'm the only 26-year-old in my area who doesn't have a driver's license. It can be isolating sometimes, but it's something I'm not ashamed of, at least not anymore. That's why I resonated so closely with the character of Sam. Without realizing it, he takes great strides for someone with a disability. Getting a girlfriend, going off to college, getting and maintaining a job, the list goes on and on. The final season, we see him move into his first apartment with his best friend, something I have yet to do. Finally, we have some good, accurate representation. One little issue. Keir Gilchrist, the actor portraying our leading man, doesn't have autism or any disability at all. Womp womp sound. So the fact that Keir Gilchrist, Gil, Keir Gilchrist, oh my god, he must hate me. <laughs> it, it, he has a kind of hard name to pronounce. But Keir Gilchrist, Keir Gilchrist, the fact that Keir Gilchrist is neurotypical or doesn't have any type of disability kind of irks me. He did research on the role, but it's just not the same, you know? You want somebody who has lived experience in having a disability and having that not be the only thing about him. You don't want to have to do research on having a disability when you yourself have a disability, you know? All this to say, he did a phenomenal job as Sam with what he had, which was not a disability. This kind of gap is precisely why I want to get into the entertainment industry. I'm taking a screenwriting course now and I want to write about obsession, you know, unrequited love. And that's something I have personal experience with. So Netflix UK and Ireland has a, a video titled Atypical Answers to All the internet's most searched questions and I needed a little refresher on all the plot points so bear with me here. First of all, Sam and Zahid's relationship 
is so pure. It's something I remembered constantly. It was a really good thing for Sam, and it was a great thing for Zahid as well. They're college roommates now, which is kind of perfect because it gives a, ch it gives Sam a chance to, you know, branch out from Elsa's wing, and and be be an adult without her without her nudging him. Towards the end of the season, Sam even enlists the help of Casey to help him learn to drive so that he can take Zahid home from the hospital from when he has his testicular cancer surgery. Did anyone else's heart melt at this? I thought this was so, so sweet and again, like I said in my little article part, it would be a lot better, like the streets of Southern California would be a hell of a lot safer if I did not drive. So I can't relate to this personally, but I think this was really sweet and pure. Casey, Casey, Casey. I really learned to love this character. And in season four, she shines. From cracking down on pressure to succeed in track, to coming out as bi, this girl has seriously, seriously grown. We get to see Casey struggle with interpersonal relationships, which I really like. And it was just a, a really good part of the show. I mean, she, she was a really good part of the show. And well done, Bridget Lundy Payne. They don't even identify as a girl. They're non-binary, which I learned. And I really, really love that. Not that the fact that they exist as non-binary, just the fact that they're in the pop culture zeitgeist is, a really good thing. Next page and page the girl has got some depth. <laughs> We've seen her grow from being Sam's practice girlfriend finally making it to desert at the Olive Garden. Whatever that means. At the very end of season four we see Sam make this gorgeous declaration of how much he loves her and all this sweet sweet stuff and then he says, we need to break up for a while. I thought this was really sad, but also extremely necessary because Sam's jetting off to Antarctica and Paige is gonna go build homes in Atlanta, which is really, really cool and very appropriate for her. I'm glad he made the decision and I'm glad that she kind of agreed. This was a really mature and good moment for the two of them. And I also really like the ambiguity of it all. You know, Sam, he says for a while in his language when breaking up with her. Also, there's Doug and Elsa. You know, one of the questions that they answered, so to speak, was do they stay together? And for the most part and for the time being the answer to that question is yes you know they've been through trials and tribulations but their relationship ultimately stuck it out and you know good on them for making all those decisions one of the main plot points of season one that i actually do remember was uh, elsa's all whole cheating thing i kind of didn't like watching that 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 whole all those scenes in season one was kind of hard to watch and i was and i ended up cringing at a lot of it just because i didn't really root for the guy he was cheating she was cheating with the four is that the right language ultimately she probably needed that experience to grow you know so you know good on her for making that decision and good on the writers for including such a multifaceted character <laughs> i guess for the last shot of the show we finally get to see sam taking his first steps in antarctica 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 I remembered this from the first scene of the show, from his therapy session with Julia, I think. Um, I like that it was a full circle moment. 
You know, we didn't get a whole lot of those, but I really, really liked how they did that. And I like that we at least got a half decent ending with Sam. I wish we could have seen more about Casey and Izzy going off to UCLA. We don't even see if they get in, which is kind of disappointing, but you know, I'd like to th think of it optimistically and say that they do get in. I do like that they stayed together though. That was really nice. I, I really, really like Izzy for Casey. I think they balance each other's energies well. That whole thing with, she came out to Doug, her father, and her father didn't really accept that she, she was dating Izzy, or he, it's not that he didn't accept it, he just didn't like Izzy for her. And you know, I thought that was a really necessary thing that the showrunner did. Overall, this was such a cute show. The YouTuber Emergency kind of noted that the show is a little boring, and I do kind of agree with that. Um, it could have had more interesting plot points or something along the lines of that. But like I said earlier, they did the best with what they had. So, you know, good on them. Four seasons spanning over four years, it, it was really hard to remember the previous things that had happened. And the various Netflix YouTube channels do give us a hand with that, but I guess I should have just watched it over, I suppose. When it first came out, it was inspiring to see a story about a kid with autism and the challenges he faces with social relationships, with, his, with the heed and sex and dating with Paige and they ha even had issues of bullying in, in season one with you know that one random girl who was just like oh he's not all there eh. their initiative in normalizing therapy and his whole relationship with Julia you know you, you don't really see a whole lot of patients fall in love with their uh therapists but that was a nice little caveat to him ultimately falling in love with Paige. And so, so much more. You know, Sam is really a multifaceted character and I was able to root through him throughout the entire series. So, you know, good on Robia Rashid, the showrunner, for creating a character like that. Yes, Keir Gilchrist, Keir Gilchrist, Keir Gilchrist doesn't have autism, but he did the best with what he had and that's what's important. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Let me know, what are your thoughts on Atypical? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you just not watch it at all because you either know a person with autism or special needs or you have special needs yourself and you just didn't like how the whole situation played out? Let me know in the comments. Once again, I've been Imani Van Buren, and this is IDB Watch With Me, a channel where I debunk TV shows. This was actually my first video where I actually sat down and talked about a TV show, which is so exciting! So, if you want more content like that, hit subscribe. I'm going to talk about Schmigadoon next. Like that show, don't be afraid to hit subscribe. Have a good day.